the Blackpool Tower. It stood tall over the Wild Coast for 125 years, attracting visitors from all over the world. When it first opened on May 14, 1894, it quickly earned the nickname Wonderland of the World due to its impressive collection of attractions. But have you ever wondered why the Blackpool Tower was built? The answer can easily be found in Blackpool's former mayor. John Bickerstaff's visit to the Great Paris Exhibition in 1889 was astounding. When he returned to Blackpool, he commissioned the tower's construction, investing 2,000 pounds of his own funds at the time. The London-based Standard Contract and Debenshire Corporation established the Blackpool Tower Company in 1890. They bought an aquarium on the Central Promenade with the intention of erecting a replica of the Eiffel Tower right there. July 1891, Bickerstaff, he was named chairman of the new company, and the first shares were sold right away. However, the company encountered some financial difficulties, and Bickerstaff, he was forced to purchase available shares to keep the company from going bankrupt. The tower was designed by Lancashire architects James Maxwell and Charles Tuke. Both men had died by the time the tower was completed, and Heenan and Froude of Manchester had taken over as structural engineers. They supplied and built the tower, as well as the electric lighting and aquarium front pieces made of steel. They used a new hydraulic riveting system based on Fielding and Platt of Gloucester's technology. The tower and buildings cost around £290,000 to design and construct at the time. The tower and the base were built with 5 million bricks, 3,478 long tons of steel, and 352 long tons of cast iron. Unlike the Eiffel Tower, the Blackpool Tower is not self-contained. The building that houses Blackpool Tower Circus actually has a hidden base inside of it. This design of the tower it was way ahead of its time. The building, it gently sways in strong winds. Standing 518 feet or 158 meters tall, it's the 125th tallest freestanding tower in the entire world. It's a magnificent Victorian engineering masterpiece. 3,000 customers took the first rise to the top of the tower May 14th of 1894. Tourists paid six pence for admission. Six pence more for a ride up the lifts, and six pence more for the circus. In September 1893, local journalists were the first members of the public to ascend the tower using construction ladders. Over time, the tower did suffer from corrosion due to improper painting in its early years. It prompted discussions about tearing it down altogether. It was decided to be rebuilt instead, though. Between 1920 and 1924, all the steelwork of the structure was replaced and renewed. The tower has been involved in a number of incidents since then, including a fire that could be seen from up to 50 miles away. Back in 1894, the Norwegian ship Abano was lost at sea, stuck in a storm after they mistook this tower for a lighthouse. The ship's bell still hangs in Cleveland's St. Andrew's Church. The crow's nest on the tower was removed during World War II and used as a Royal Air Force radar station. For general aviation, flying near that Blackpool airspace, the Blackpool Tower now serves as a visual reporting point. It stood the test of time, and it's still an extremely popular tourist attraction in Blackpool. Aside from the tower, Blackpool is famous for its beaches, amusement parks, and nightlife. Visitors that are looking for a little bit of entertainment and relaxation, this is the spot to go. It's got a long history as a seaside resort. So the next time you make your way over to the United Kingdom and you're on that west coast, head on up to Blackpool. Check out some of the most famous attractions. They've also been holding an annual life festival there since 1879. These are Interesting things with JC.